Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. I'm just taking this opportunity to start the video now because the noise of the mower outside has stopped and uh, if it does start up again in a minute, um, please bear with us because we have to have the grass cut some point and in between the raindrops is just about now. Anyway, so today let's have a go at painting a sunflower. I know we've done sunflowers before, but um, it's one of the challenge paintings and some people have asked whether we could perhaps do one. I know it's not the summer, it's not sunflower season, but they are a good way of exploring a few techniques which are applicable to all flowers actually. For example, the cone flower as well, same kind of ideas involved. So I'll be using um, mead and watercolour paper as usual. Um, I just wanted to mention these little packs of paper that they've sent me. These are like little sample packs and um, they come two by three inches inside there. There's ten in each little pack and they come as a set of, I think there's five in a pack. Um, and I'm just looking for a few of them to show you. They're quite fun actually. Um, I've been using them as um, pieces of paper to just test out the paintings that I've been doing for um, the challenge. So this is a couple of trial sunflowers. I was trying out some yellow paints that I'd just <clears throat> been given as well. Um, anyway, so I'm keeping those in the back of my watercolour um, sketchbook journal, whatever you want to call it, the one I've been using for Flowers of the World. <clears throat> so that's in there. And this is this is the painting, this is today's passion flower. This is um, the sunflowers that we're going to have a go at in a minute. Um, and then sometime later today, I'm going to, well, maybe even in this video, I'm going to try and do these cone flowers on this piece here. This was my trial, again, on my little two by three piece. It's really very um, liberating to just be able to grab a pack of little pieces of paper all ready for you. You haven't got to cut them up yourself. It's really quite fun. Um, daffodils and California poppies and sun roses, just showing you what we've done so far, going backwards. Um, Indian paintbrush plant, cornflowers, um, kangaroo paw, uh, one variety, there are all sorts of different kinds and the one you drew might not look like that. Edelweiss, uh, Protea, again loads and loads of different ones, that's just one way. And the blue bonnets, which I think are a bit like lupins or lupines or whatever you call them. And then my famous pansies that I like to do so much. Okay, so we'll pop that over there so I can see it. Um, and so that's that, I can go out of the way for the minute. Over there. This is the paper I'm going to be using today. This is a 10 by 7 size cold press watercolour paper from Eden. So we'll put that there. And oh, I just wanted to talk about this. This is a swatch that I did. Um, I wanted to swatch out all the colours that I've got in my Rubens palette. So I just started in the bottom corner or did I start up there? I can't remember. Anyway, I just filled it up with colours and that was a really therapeutic and nice thing to do and it had absolutely no stress involved whatsoever. And then I thought once I've done that, I would then get my white pen and practice my doodles. So I've been doing all sorts of different um, options on here just for future reference so that when I'm next doodling a painting, I can say, oh, I know, I had that idea that I would do so and so and such and such and I can look on here and find it. So I don't know whether that's a good idea or a useful idea, or it's probably not a new idea, but anyway, it's something. So let's put this here. And I've got my, uh, see, Christmas 2024 planning. Going to have to start thinking about Christmas already. Um, I've got my Kiritaki set here and you can see, I think the colors, mostly the colors I'm going to be using are the yellows and the reds and the orange going to be having to replace some of these soon by the look of it. 
Um, and then down here on this side, I've got some browns and we will probably start off with some brown in the middle for the center of the sunflower. Sunflower seeds um, centers are often depicted in different ways because when they're not completely ripe, uh, I think they're greenish. And when they are, they tend to go all the way through brown into black. So basically you can do the center of your sunflower seed, sunflower flower, uh, any, any color you like. And I'm going to concentrate on doing them brownish today, like this. Because I like that better than the greenish ones. So let me find a paintbrush. Um, this is a Craftamo uh, X Dianenton, not X as in previously, but X as in cross, as in collaboration, a size 14 round. That should do the trick. There are a few of those sets left, not many though. And when they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to do a drawing. I'm just going to do some painting and I'm going to start with some brown. So we'll begin with um, an umber, raw umber this is, could be burnt umber, but it's dark brown. And I'm just going to do a circle like that, leaving the middle empty. And we'll, we'll do two of these. So we'll do them like that. And then I'm going to pick up some Indian red, I think, which is kind of reddish brown. Was this burnt sienna? That's burnt sienna, sorry, burnt sienna. And we'll just drop that in, still leaving some of it uh, empty, like that. Could make one of them a bit bigger than the other. So the one here is a bit closer. And we could make this one a bit rounder. I've sat down now, I can see it slightly better. So we'll just do two. And maybe we might add some around the edges to balance off the composition at some point, but for the minute, we'll just do it like that. And then the way I did the ones I did before, uh, so I'm just gonna leave that to blend a bit. And meanwhile, I'm going to go for the lemon, lemon yellow, and I'll just wake that up giving it a bit of a stir around. And then I'm just going to use the brush to make these petals and touch the wet paint just lightly like that. Don't make them all the same size, just do them any old how. Like that. And then I will go for some cadmium orange or cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow. And we'll bring some of that in, in between. Some people have said that they have problems making a point with their round brush. It's really to do with having enough water and paint on it so that when you fill it up, you can come in just with the tip of it and then just press down slightly as you go down on your stroke. And then we'll pick up some more brown and just add that on a half, half of our center like that. Might as well do it here too while we've got it on the brush. And now we'll do this one and do it basically the same. Here comes the rain. It's 
So I've done some of these in lemon and some of them in cadmium, and then I'm going to go to orange so that these two flowers have slightly different mixtures of color. Okay, so we'll go to the cadmium orange to do the ones in between. There are plenty of different ways of doing sunflowers. You can do them wet and wet, you can do lots of different ways of doing your pen. And there are different kinds of sunflowers too. So some of them don't look at all like this. And these ones, I'm, as I'm working on this, I'm sort of deciding how I'm going to develop it. And that all depends on how it sort of reacts to my mood and so on. And you just, you never quite know how things are gonna go, do you? So you have to play it by ear. So now we're looking for the green. So I'll just turn this around and we're gonna start with some olive green, which is quite a nice leafy kind of color. And we'll just put in some leaves like this. And I'm, I'm deliberately allowing the color from the one behind, from the petals to flow, okay, into it. And we will imagine nice thick sunflower stems because they are. And we will just do those like this. And we want some darker green in there to blur. Forest green with a bit of brown to make it even darker. And we'll put some more leaves up here. I think I might just pop a bit of brown up here for, and then what's the matter then? Okay, so I've dried that and now I'm going to, um, I've got two choices. I can either start to think about the background or I can continue with the petals. Um, I think I'm going to continue a little bit with the petals first of all. I've just picked up some cadmium orange and I'm going to um, do another layer over partly over these petals. So not filling them in completely and varying it from one to the next, leaving some of them completely un, unaltered. Because I think what makes a painting um, look interesting to the eye is variety. Uh, yes, so excuse the background noises, please, um, and the interruptions. It's one of those days. But I did want to get this done today. So I am, yes, basically putting another layer of orange on there. Then I'm going to go into my black, which is this one here. And let's um, put in some really nice strong darks around the outside edge of the sunflower center. And 
like that. And then I pick up a little bit of water and just touch the edge of that and let that flow a bit. Okay, so let that kind of bleed into the rest of the colour. Take that over there, soften that up a bit. Same here. So we've got a highlight, but it's not too white, not glaring white like that. And then um, we can, I'm going to use indigo in the background, use some indigo for um, bringing into contrast, be a little bit brave. Uh, but you can see what that does immediately, can't you? And you can sculpt the leaves and the petals with the colour, with the dark. You can actually shape them if you can be bothered to, uh, you know, you can go like that and take off the bit that's in the wrong place. Lots of nice dark blue. Give yourself, I think um, sunflower leaves have a bit of a jaggedy edge, don't they? So like that. And then Just go around there like that. We can add some more greens as we go further away from the flower. We can mix some more greens. Let's do that and then you can drop in some blue. make it lighter around the edges and also of course the other thing you can do is you can actually sort of go over as if there was another leaf kind of partly there and put the stem in going up here Sometimes it's nice to just dab the paint a little bit with a tissue just to make it a little bit lighter. If you think that's gone a bit dark. And we can come around this side here with our blue again. We have a kind of little bit of an abstract thing going on here with the leaves. I always say, as you know, I never know exactly where a painting is going to go when I start it. And this is definitely one of those. And then when we get nearer to the top, we're going to want to go lighter. So we'll pop into some some green and kind of whoosh that around a little bit here so we don't have a line where we don't want one. I'll just lighten that a little bit.
There's no harm in going over your petals with the shadow. It, it'll look okay at the end. And sometimes where it bleeds like that, that's sometimes those are the best effects, the things that you actually want to have happen because this is watercolor where you let the water do the work. It's not acrylic where you control, can control everything and paint over it if you want. Which is a complete waste of time as far as I'm concerned. It's not oil. Um, ditto. Why would you want to do that? Um, it's all about letting the water do the work. So we're putting in some more petals for this one here. It's turning into a really nice grungy sunflower there. So now I'm just going to whack the hairdryer on it and see what it looks like when it's dry and whether or not we need to do anything else, which I think we probably will. Okay, that's dry. And what I'm going to do now is because the these leaves have gone a little bit on the bluish side, I'm going to do something called glazing. So I'm just picking up some, you can see it here, some quinacridone gold, which is a transparent orange color. This one is from Craftamo. And I'm going to just put that on top of these leaves, which have gone a bit bluish, to change their hue to um, more warm and vibrant green. And so we'll just go all the way over all of those and the stems as well. And when that's dry, hopefully that will look better. Adjusting the hue of your leaves. And you can, you can do that anywhere you like, really. You can go into some of the uh, indigo and change it to a greenish, dark greenish blue actually much better. You've still got the really intense darks in the background, but you have that sunshiny effect. So that's going to have to be dried now and then I'll come back in with some even darker darks. Okay, so here we have um, some black this is just Kiritaki black, and I'm going to be a little bit bold, I think. That's a bit too much water on that brush. So start again, just do some stems. I mean, some veins rather, using the tip of the brush like that. And then on this one, And then sometimes you need something like that. That will be okay when that's dry, I think. And then up here. Same thing again. Down here. We're just trying to throw the whole thing into, into perspective. So we just pull that out a little bit. If you feel that you've gone a bit dark, just wet it. And then lift. 
and you can bring it up again. If you feel, for example, this is too dark, just run the brush along the edge of it. And you'll get a nice blurry line. is but it looks as if it wants to be there okay well I think we have probably got enough going on here now And um, yeah, a nice kind of jungle of leaves and things like that. That's what I was aiming for anyway. Sort of jungly thing. And then up here, some sunflowers that have some kind of dimension to them. So it looks like the centers are kind of jumping out at you a little bit. So there we are. I think I think that might be quite interesting to see with a mount on it. I'm going to go and get one and show you what that looks like mounted. Okay, so we could put a white mount on this. It's a little bit too small, but you can see what a difference that makes to the painting straight away. Or you could put a dark mount on, and I've got this navy blue one here, which again is a bit too small, but you can see how cropping it in sometimes gives you quite an interesting effect and uh, yeah so uh, sometimes a dark mount is a really good idea for a painting it can make things really pop so to speak and uh, on the other hand you might prefer a traditional white which also is quite good but I'm, I'm quite veering towards that I think that actually looks quite impressive really and um, in a frame and so on and so forth those, you can see the stems starting to stand out there and, and so on and so forth. The composition worked reasonably well. So you might have fun with that. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope there wasn't too much background noise and too many interruptions. And um, I will let you go. So uh, I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications. And of course, if you feel that way inclined, we would love to welcome you to our Patreon group um, and uh, to the Facebook um, members group where you share the daily challenges with everybody. So I'm going to let you go and I'm dying for my lunch. So I'll see you again soon, everybody. Bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>